You are listening to a Redeemed Christian Fellowship podcast produced by Hearing Heart Multimedia in Phoenix, Arizona. We hope this message is an encouragement to your faith and brings insight through the Word of God in your pursuit of God's perfect plan for your life. Please find us online and social media at Redeemed Christian Fellowship for additional broadcast and ministry resources. Well, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome to the RCF podcast. I am going to open up in prayer and then we're just going to get started. We're going to dive right in. Father God, we thank you, Lord Jesus, for your goodness. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you, Lord, for your anointing and for being so good to us, Father God. We are just so grateful that we can be free from anything, any kind of bondage, anything that may Put us in fear, Father God. We are so grateful that we are delivered from that and redeemed from that. We just give you all the praise and glory in Jesus' name. Amen. So I'm going to continue on with the subject of living free from fear and anxiety. Because if you are a Christian, you can and were meant to live free from fear and all of the byproducts of fear, such as worry, doubt, anxiety, uh, stress. Uh, any kind of pressure, um, you are free from all that because we understand that fear is a spirit. And last week we talked about the different types of fear. So we we discussed um, the idea of timidity or cowardice is what Timothy was experiencing when he was pastoring the church at Ephesus, which is why Paul had to tell him, you have not been given the spirit of fear, you've not been given that spirit of timidity, but you've been given a spirit of love and power and a sound mind. Because when you have a sound mind, you can't be in fear because you have a sound mind. That sound mind is going to think and believe like it ought to as a Christian, yes? Um, And we did talk about the fact that fear is a spirit and that we've not been given the spirit of bondage again to fear, but we've we've been given that spirit of adoption whereby we cry, Abba, Father, amen. Um, And as we were wrapping up last week, we were talking about Job And because we talked about Timothy, we talked about Peter, when he was presented with the circumstance as in the storms, the waves that that were boisterous, and he got scared, and he called out to Jesus to help him. And Jesus asked him, why did you doubt, right? Oh, you of little faith, why did you doubt? So we kind of wrapped up with, um, not kind of, we did, we wrapped up with Job. Because with Job's situation, it was different from Peter's, it was different from Timothy's, because Job was, uh, you know, burning sacrifices on behalf of his sons because he said, it may be that my sons are doing this, this, that, and cursing God and, and living wrong and whatever. But those, and he did it regularly. The scripture said he did, he did it regularly. And so Job's actions were motivated by fear. It doesn't say specifically that he was, mo- but we know that he was motivated by fear in, in what he was doing. And then, um, but because that fear was motivating him, that fear was in his mind, you know, it could be that my sons are cursing God and blah, blah, blah. Because that's where he was, that's where his motivations were coming from. The enemy knew that. The devil knew that, which is why he was able to attack Job. And attack him, he did. Holy moly, he attacked him. Which is why, you know, Job said in, in uh, Job 3.25, For the thing that I greatly feared has come upon me, and what I dreaded has happened to me. Again, he was in fear because he said, that thing which I greatly feared has come upon me. So once you get in fear, even if it's just a little hint of fear, man, the enemy is going to, he's going to do his worst on, on your mind. And one of the things that pastor told me a while ago, when I say a while ago, it was probably a couple of months ago or maybe a month ago. I'm, I'm losing track of time right now. But he said, it's one thing to know the scriptures in your head. It's another thing to let them affect you. And so I want to focus on that. I thought that was like, I mean, it was so simple. It's such a simple statement, but it's just full of revelation because you can know the scriptures back and forth, Genesis to Revelation, but have they affected you? Um, Philippians 4, 6 through 7 says, Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God and the peace of God which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. I believe I read this um, at the end of last week's podcast, but I want to talk a little bit more about it because that word careful in verse 6 means to be anxious, 
to be troubled with cares, to take thought. In other words, be careful for nothing. Don't be anxious. Don't be troubled with cares. Don't take any thought about it. Just like in Matthew 6, 25, when it says, uh, when Jesus is saying, actually, therefore I say unto you, take no thought for your life, what you shall eat, what you shall drink, what, what you shall put on your body. That's what he's saying. Don't be anxious. Don't be worried. Don't be troubled with all these cares. Uh, because if you seek first his righteousness and his kingdom, then all these things will be added unto you. That was, that's in Matthew 6, 33. But in other words, we are to be anxious about nothing. Let God know your requests, like it says, in everything, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. And what's going to happen? His peace shall keep your heart and your mind, because we need that sound mind. You can't be in fear or worry when you're letting God's peace rule your heart and mind, but you have to let it, you know? So it's your choice. It's an action. You have to let it. Keep your heart and mind because you're giving those things to God. You're giving him those needs. You're telling him what you need. You're telling him what you want with prayer and supplication. You know, you can't just, as a Christian, you have to let the word work. You have to work it, right? You have to, there's some, some effort that you have to do in order for the word of God to work in your life. You can't just sit on the chair or on the sofa and just, okay, God, let your, no, you can't just do that. You have to, you have to work the word. And, you know, I think it's safe, because we're talking about fear, I think it's safe to say that all of us, at one point or another, we have struggled with fear or the temptation to fear. Whether you were timid or cowardly like Timothy, whether you were afraid of the circumstances like Peter, you know, the storm, you know, all around you, and you're, you feel like you're sinking, you know, metaphorically sinking, and you're calling out to Jesus, Lord, rescue me, or, or whether you're struggling with that with those, you know, subtle thoughts that Job was struggling with, you know, the the suspicion, the 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 assumptions, the 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 worry, you know, he he was he was he was struggling with something that most likely wasn't happening. <clears throat> and how often do we get afraid and think and assume about some things that may or may not happen? Most likely it won't happen, but you think it's going to happen because of some uh you're just motivated by fear. But fear is nothing, I don't know where I heard this, and I'm sure most of us have heard this, but I just want to say it because it is so good. Fear is nothing more than false evidence appearing real. F-E-A-R, false evidence appearing real. Fear. Fear is a faith stealer. I remember one of the first books that, that um, Pastor wrote, um, gosh, I think it was in 07 or 08. Uh, it was a book on faith. And it's a great book, seriously, great book. ABCs of Faith, man. But he wrote in there, there's a section on faith stealers. Because when you're in fear, that means that you're not in faith or you're not in strong faith. Some of those faith stealers are fear, doubt, unbelief, and head knowledge, among other things. Because, it, again, it's one thing to know the scriptures. It's another thing to let them affect you. Having stored or head knowledge of the word is fine. Um, but that by itself doesn't allow your spirit to be affected by the scriptures so that your faith in the scriptures is built up and activated. When your faith is activated, then you can easily fight off fear and the temptation and or the temptation of fear whenever and however it presents itself. There was a teaching that pastor did recently. I believe it was uh, somewhere in the refiner's fire series. It was maybe earlier this year or late last year. And he was talking about, you know, the way to stave off, I don't, think, I don't know if you use the word stave off, and I think I'm using the, the word the right way. Anyway, the way to come against fear and, and, and worry and doubt is to constantly have your faith activated. Because when it's constantly activated, um, you know, the, the instincts that you have are to respond in faith whenever something presents itself. You know, whenever fear, worry, anxiety, doubt, unbelief, whenever those present itself to you, your faith is so built up because you're activating your faith every day. You gotta stay in the word every day. You gotta pray in the spirit every day. Um, you gotta keep your faith activated every day so that when that circumstance comes on you, in the name of Jesus, I rebuke this fear because your word says not to be afraid because you are with me, O oh God. You know, your word says that no weapon formed against me shall prosper, O oh God. You know, cry out to Abba Father, Lord, Father, God, Abba Father, you've not given me the spirit of bondage again to fear, 
but you've given me that spirit of adoption where I am your child. And if I'm your child, I don't have anything to be afraid of. I am more than a conqueror. Those are the things that should automatically, instinctively, second naturely <laughs> come out of you. Let your faith be constantly activated. Get in the word. I'm, t I'm, I'm saying this to myself too. Believe me. Believe me. I'm saying this to myself. That's the idea of affect, letting the scriptures affect you and not just having that stored knowledge. Remember, we mentioned last week that fear can present itself in different ways. It can work subtly, like, you know, a little bit at a time. One day, you like this thought pops in your head, and you're like, hmm, and you start entertaining it. And then the next day, and the next day, and then a month goes by, and you are, you're just, oh, you're, you're frazzled, right? You're just a, an emotional wreck. Um, yeah, that's happened, right? But fear can also come on you suddenly. And you don't even expect it. It's just out of the blue. It just comes on you. Proverbs 3.25, though, in the Amplified, I love this. Be not afraid of sudden terror and panic, nor of the stormy blast or the storm and ruin of the wicked when it comes, for you will be guiltless. But be not afraid of sudden terror or panic. You know, one time, this was a couple months ago, I was sitting on my sofa. I, was I had the TV on. I wasn't really watching it because I was working probably... Pastor and I had just worked, and so I was I was editing something. So I had my laptop in my lap, and I'm sitting on the sofa, and uh, I feel like something on my arm. I had a sleeveless shirt on. I, had, I feel something on my arm, and I thought it was just a hair, because, you know, look at this. I'm used to just hairs falling and whatever. So I thought it was a hair, and I didn't really think anything of it. And all of a sudden, that hair started moving up. And I looked down. Right here, there was a scorpion crawling up my my bicep <laughs> and that's not that's not something you see every day and I looked and I went whoa <laughs> I I like grabbed it and flung it off of me and that's the idea of not having that sudden terror or panic it's that whoa just get off of me right I mean it was like whoa a scorpion how in the world did that get there how did I not feel it was it did it was it crawling up my arm did it fall off the seat so that's was like whoa how did that get there <laughs> and of course afterwards after I shoved it you know flung it off me I was like because oh, uh, uh, it was just the idea of that was a scorpion on me and thank God thank God that's just mercy that it didn't you know, uh, sting me. Uh, I've never been stung by a scorpion. I've seen plenty of scorpions inside and outside of my house, and I, I don't like them. Um, you should see me uh, killing a scorpion. It looks like I'm, I'm trying to defeat Kong or something. Uh, yeah, I'm just like, I grab a shoe and I just like scream and ah! You know, yeah, it looks like I'm really fighting off something, something terrible. But, but that's the, you know, I, I could have reacted so differently uh, you know, um, with a scorpion on my arm, but it was honestly, I'm, I'm surprised I, I was as, as calm as I, as I was, but even though afterwards it was like, Oh my gosh, that was, Oh, you know, that was insane. Oh my gosh, a scorpion was on my arm. Um, but that's the idea. Do not be afraid of sudden terror and panic. If it was a cockroach, I think Deborah would have been on the ceiling. Um, <laughs> I don't like cockroaches either, um, but they don't scare me. But anyway, the devil, going back to a spirit of fear, the devil is the spirit behind fear and all the byproducts that fear brings with it. Worry, doubt, anxiety. Um, again, those are all byproducts of fear. And the devil is looking around to see who is the most vulnerable to these emotions. And that's when he attacks. Again, going back to Job, the devil knew that he could get to Job, which is why he asked God, hey, can I? Um, <laughs> First Peter 5, 8 says, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. Don't be the one that he may devour. He's looking for the weak Christian in the herd. He's looking for the scared Christian. He's looking for the Christian that's going to freeze or overreact in sudden terror and panic, just like uh, Psalms 3.25. Uh, he's looking for that person. You know why? Because he's a bully. The devil and all of his cohorts, they're just bullies. And bullies, they seek out the weak ones. They seek out the ones that they can torture and torment and manipulate because they know that they can't manipulate 
the strong ones. They can't get to the, the Christian who knows the word, who knows that he or she does not have to be in fear, and they're not going to mess with that person, but they're going to roar like a lion and seeking that person who goes, oh my gosh, and that's when he's got you. Don't let your mind bully your faith. Okay, gosh, I've experienced fear. I've experienced worry and anxiety. I have had actual anxiety and panic attacks where I, I feel pressure on my chest. I can't, I hope, I hope I didn't mess up the mic just there. I feel pressure on my chest. I can't breathe. Um, my mind is consumed with the worst scenario. Um, that is not sober of mind. It says in 1 Peter 5, 8, be sober, be vigilant. That's not being sober of mind when you're panicking and allowing that panic to come on you. To be sober means to be of sound judgment. It means to be watchful, to be on alert. It's, it's the same idea as having your faith constantly activated so that when a circumstance does present itself, you can immediately respond with the word and overcome that whatever is trying to come on you. To be vigilant means to be watchful, to be alert, to literally stay awake. Now, that's stay awake spiritually, okay, because you can't stay awake physically all the time because your body needs to rest. You've got to go to sleep. But be sober, be watchful, have that sound judgment. We are to be sober of mind and spirit of a sound judgment. Just like 2 Timothy, we have been given the spirit of love, power, and a sound mind. That's what we've been given. We've not been given the junk. As Christians, we've not been given, we've not been given the fear and the worry and the, and the anxiety. What is the opposite of sober? be drunk, <laughs> to be intoxicated. And, you know, I think adults, we, we, we probably at one time or another have experienced being drunk. And there are certain levels of that type of intoxication, whether you're intoxication, inebriated. I've heard the term legless. Now, what does that tell you? Like you ha are so drunk, you don't have use of your legs. But that's how, and when, when I was, when I was coming to RCF, uh, very early on, and uh, Pastor was was going through that scripture, uh, first uh, First Peter five eight, and he said basically that 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 phrase to to be sober, to be vigilant means to not be drunk with worry, and I I even wrote that in my Bible. Don't be drunk with worry. That's what I wrote in my Bible, because when you're drunk and intoxicated, you are altered. You can't think like yourself. You certainly don't act like yourself. Whether you're acting, you know, bold and brazen and, you know, oh, what I can take you or you're, or you're being sad or you're being overly happy <laughs> or you're being angry. You just aren't yourself because you're altered from the alcohol. So when you are in worry, when you aren't sober of mind and you're drunk with worry, you are altered. You're not acting like yourself, be, meaning you are not acting like a Christian. You are altered. You know uh, that <laughs> you understand what I'm saying, and and I I've experienced, well I've experienced being drunk with worry, okay. When you're not acting like yourself, and it, that's not a good place to be. That's not what I was meant to 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 experience as a Christian. Someone in the world, yeah, it's pretty normal. But as a Christian, that's not what we've been given. Um, remember when the disciples were in the boat. With Jesus. I'm not talking about Peter. I'm talking about when they were in the boat with Jesus in Mark 4, 35 through 40. On the same day when evening had come, he said to them, let us cross over to the other side. I want you to pay attention to that. Now when they said, when they had left the multitude, they took him along in the boat as he was. And a great windstorm arose and the waves beat into the boat so that it was already filling with water. But he was in the stern asleep on a pillow in the storm. And when they, and they awoke him, the disciples awoke him, and they said, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? <laughs> and then he arose and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace, be still. I love that. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. But he said to them, Why are you so fear fearful? How is it that you have no faith? Now, remember last week when we talked about Peter, he asked Peter, Why, do you, why did you doubt? Why did, oh, thou of little faith. Why did you doubt? Peter had faith to step out on the water, right? But his, his, his faith got a little tiny once he saw all the circumstances, okay? So that's why he's asking the disciples now, why do you have no faith? Because they immediately went to the worst case scenario and said, why, don't you care that we're dying? You know, have you ever said that to God? Don't you care about me, God? Of course he cares, but you're, 
That's not faith, what you're doing right now. You're being drunk with worry. I would say in that moment, the disciples were drunk with worry. Yeah, because they thought they were going to die. They, they, they didn't realize that Jesus had said, let us cross over to the other side. He didn't say, maybe we can get over this, over through the, through the sea if there aren't any storms. No, no, no. He didn't check the weather. He didn't look at the sky and be like, oh, okay, there might be a storm coming, so maybe we shouldn't cross. No, he just said, let us cross over to the other side. The disciples seem to have forgotten what he said. Are we forgetting what Jesus, and are we forgetting what the word says about us not being worried, not being anxious, not being fearful? Because everything that we need as far as living this life as Christians is in the word. So if we've not been given the spirit of bondage again to fear, if the word of God says not to worry, then why are we living in fear and worry? Uh, I hope I'm not sounding like, like, I hope I'm not sounding really mean because I'm not, I, you know what, again, I'm talking to myself and I'm building myself up. So I certainly hope that it, this is working for you. If not, then maybe pastor can teach us nicer. Um, but clearly the disciples were drunk with worry in that moment. They were scared. I want to be like Jesus, asleep and calm. And if there's something coming on me, a, you know, a worry or a circumstance or a storm. I don't want to be afraid of that sudden fear. I don't want to be afraid of that, of that, you know, sudden panic. I just want to sleep on the boat during the storm. That's what I want to do. Let's go back to 1 Peter 5, 8, because I want to add verse 7 to it, because it is so, just, I mean, come on. It's just so good, especially in the Amplified Classic. Casting the whole of your care all your anxieties, all your worries, all your concerns, once and for all on him. For he cares for you affectionately and cares about you watchfully. He is watching you. He is watching you. He knows you're concerned about things. He knows you're, you're worried about bills getting paid. He knows that you're concerned that, you know, uh, that, Things might be a little more expensive to buy right now. But give those cares, those concerns to him once and for all because he cares about you. Be well balanced, temperate, sober of mind. Don't be drunk with worry. Be vigilant and cautious at all times. It's okay to be cautious. Don't be paranoid. There's a difference. For that enemy of yours, the devil, roams around like a lion, roaring in fierce hunger, seeking someone to seize upon and devour. Don't be that one that he can seize upon and devour. We want to be sober. We want to be vigilant. We want to just cast all of our cares, every, every concern, every anxiety, give it to God. That's why he's there. He's Abba Father. He's given you that spirit of adoption where you can cry, Abba, Father, I'm concerned about this. I'm concerned that I don't maybe make enough money to, to buy groceries or pay my bills or make the rent or the house payment. I'm concerned about this. You know, but in, in Philippians, it says, be anxious for nothing, but in everything with prayer and supplication, make your requests known to God. There is actually, there's something we have to do here to avoid the worry, to avoid the anxiety, to avoid the fear, and let God take care of it. Um, Dave was, uh, when he was doing the missions offering this morning, you know, he was talking about the seed, the mustard seed, and how, you know, he's like, I don't know how that little mustard seed grows into being one of the biggest trees. You know, he's like, I don't know how that works. And it's not up to me to know. It's up to God to just figure it out, right? Cast all your cares, your anxieties, your fears, your worries on him once and for all and let him take it. Amen. Well, that is, I think, all I have got to say uh, next week. Next week, it's going to get better. OK, we're going to we're going to get happy <laughs> because next week we're going to start discussing the fact that fear has no legal access to the Christian. OK, we've been talking about, oh, we've not been given the spirit of bond bondage going to fear. But now we're going to talk about legal access okay fear has no legal access to the christian and we're also going to get into courage fighting that fear and anxiety with courage and then it's going to get really good anyway we love you 
Have a great week. We hope this has been a blessing to you and we'll see you next time.